So our next piece of art is the Pyxis of Almughira. And this is usually taught within Unit 3, which is the early Europe Colonial Americas unit that we've done. But I always save those pieces of Islamic art, and there are four of them in total. I save those pieces to teach with the rest of Islamic art. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of circle back around and do those Islamic pieces. Again, there are four of them from Unit 3. This is the first of those four. And it, it a pixis, you know, you're seeing that term right here, is a container. So this is a very small container. You can see the latch that would open it right here. It is from a group of people called the Umayyads, the Umayyad dynasty, and it was made in 968 ACE, so right before you know, the change of millennia. And you would find this made in Spain, uh, specifically an area called Al Andalus of the Iberian Peninsula in Spain. And in actually most of these pieces, these last four Islamic pieces are found in Spain. So it's a really interesting piece full of imagery, as you can tell. And the material here is ivory. So think elephant tusk and some remnants of jade inlay. And some even think that other jewels or stones would have been inlaid into an art piece like this, and even possibly this one. But unfortunately, we don't have evidence of those other jewels, just a little bit of jade. So um, this Pyxis, again, container, would have been a coming of age present and for the son of the Caliph, who is a ruler. Now, Caliph is spelled, here, let me get to that term here, right here, the caliph or ruler. So it's made for his son. I think he was turning like 18 and he would get this as a birthday gift. And his particular container would hold most likely like perfumes. So you'd open up the Pyxis and kind of like an oil diffuser or incense or even like a candle, but not lit in this case, you'd kind of bring nice perfumes into the room. So this particular one was given to him for his birthday, but these types of Pyxis pieces were given to both boys and girls or men and women. Could have been your wedding or your birthday or a, like a, a birth. And, and sometimes the rulers or caliphs would give these to allies, you know, to a gift of good faith or a gift of thanks or whatever the purpose was. So they're oftentimes a present of some sort. Now, I have this slide up, which has the four kind of main images. There are four basic um, scenes, narratives that are very symbolic, and those narrative scenes or figural images are located within these eight lobed, you know, think four leaf clover, but instead of four leaves, you have like eight, a very scalloped kind of framework around them. And they vary. So there are a lot of figural images on this particular piece, people, animals, and so on. And they're mostly done in the abstract style. So what I did was I isolated each one and we'll see those in just a second. But one thing I wanted to go over before we go into that is, you know, ivory was something, a material that was used in, you know, since the Roman times, you've got Roman diptychs like this one, you've got, um, you know, Byzantine triptychs. So it's um, a commonly used material, uh, sometimes religious, you know, if you're talking Rome or Byzantine art, or here in this particular case with Islamic art, you have something about power and a ruler. Um, but it's commonly used, and I wanted you to just see these two pieces, just so you know, and can connect um, this particular piece, like back to partly the classical era where you'd have ivory diptychs, um, possibly about a ruler or in Christian times about Jesus and religion, and also Byzantine Middle Ages triptychs like this. So 
All right, let's talk about the different scenes. So one of the scenes, you've got some really cool imagery of lions uh, attacking bulls. And um, honestly, the, the lions are more of a symbol of the Umayyad dynasty. So the prince and his father, his family are the lions and they are eating the bulls. Of course, that would be just a symbol of the strength and power and victory. And the bull would symbolize an enemy, you know, any kind of thing, it, it would work. So that is one of the sides of the Pyxis. And it's located right below the handle that opens up, like the latch that opens up the Pyxis. Another side, again, located in an eight-lobed uh, frame is the caliph, so the ruler at the time, being attended to and showing him hierarchy of scale, taller. I mean, yes, he's standing in the center above everybody. So he is the ruler in his every wish. He is being fanned. He's being given gifts. So definitely is reflecting the power of the prince's father. Um, is it the prince? Probably unlikely, but that's most people think it's the caliph or the ruler, his dad. And then you move on. This one I love. It's like some good date picking going on. Uh, so you have a tree in the center and two men on horse and with some other animals around. And they're picking dates off the tree. Now, dates are uh, a food item found in the Middle East and in North Africa. They are not native to here in, in Spain. So it's symbolizing lands that the Umayya dynasty were forced to leave. They were kind of pushed out of their original home by these people called the Abbasids. They're another family. So the Abbasids are ruling like Damascus and these areas in the Middle East, North Africa. And the Umayyads are basically showing themselves as being powerful, being able to take over that land and, and really kind of wanting those lands back uh, that they've been forced to leave. So it's them kind of gathering their strength back and getting those lands back for themselves. And then falcons, which sorry for the darker image, but the falcons here and here and above are symbols of the Umayya dynasty. They're strong and noble birds here. And you have two men gathering their eggs, which was a symbol of Cordoba in Spain, where they are. So it's really, again, symbolic of their power and their strength and their ruling and controlling this land now in Spain. So those images around and on other parts of the Pyxis, you see peacocks, you see wrestlers, which you can kind of see down here. You know, there are lots of visuals around hunters hunting their prey, a lot of powerful images. So um, our Pyxis, let's go to now this part here where you can see a little bit of the lid. The Pyxis typically at the base of the lid will have an inscription. And the inscription is written in Arabic script, like calligraphy writing here called Qufic. And I put the word right here. And this particular Qufic script is giving a blessing to al mukhira the prince, on his 18th birthday. It includes the date. It includes the prince's name. So we absolutely know who this was made for. Uh, it leaves no guessing as to you know, who it's for and when it was given. And a lot of times these Pyxis pieces, and there, there are some in museums all around the world, they, they give information about who made it, who is it for, when was it given. So they really mark an occasion and mark who the piece is made for. So that's a, an interesting part of it and really beautiful writing here on the base of the lid. So I think that is about it, but could you use horror vacui, you know, that fear of empty spaces as a descriptor here? Absolutely. Um, you know, one other thing to note, Islamic art in these, you know, the Umayyad dynasty were practicers of Islam. They 
typically will, if it's religious art, will not have figures of people or animals even. Um, but since this is more secular art, you know, not religious, it's for a prince on his birthday, you know, the power of his father and his dynasty family, they will use figural art. So that's why you see people and animals along with the more typical like vegetation plants and, and things like that. So yes, this is Islam is kind of classified under the Islamic umbrella, um, but only because you know our our um, family here that this is made for our Muslim you know practice Muslims practicing Islam, but ultimately this is secular art, and you can tell that right away because of the figures, both human and animal, that are in the piece. So again, that is the Pyxis of Al Mughira, our uh, piece going back to Unit Three. By the Umayyad or for the Umayyad family, the patron would be the Umayyad dynasty and family made for the prince Al-Mughira, whose name is in the title, on the occasion of his 18th birthday. And it was, again, made in Spain. Uh, today it is in the Louvre, if you're curious. So uh, that is it for this piece. Stay tuned for the remaining three pieces of Unit 3's art that focuses on the art of Islam.